Okay, so here we're going to show you how to staple mini lights around a window. Uh, a few things you're going to need. Um, first of all, you need a stapler. Got the, this is the, let me get that in frame there. This is the T20, T25 stapler. Um, so we use these two staples in it. Um, on the mini lights, we want to make sure uh, we use the smaller staples, which are this side here. Um, they can be both rounded or square, but the big thing is you want to make sure they're shorter. Get that up to frame there. These are both the small ones. These are the longer staples, <clears throat> the half inch instead of three eighths. So obviously you can see the difference in length there. Um, so we want to make sure we use the three eighths on this one. Um, the reason for that is they, um, when we take the lights down, we typically just give them a little tug and they, the staples pop out with these longer staples. They don't tend to uh, pop out. Um, and a lot of times the guys will give them a tug and we'll end up ripping or damaging the lights. Uh, so I'm gonna keep these small ones. These are usually big enough to do the job. They are rounded and square. I prefer the square um, because when you come back to take them down, you can actually get pliers on the corner of this without grabbing the wire. These are harder to grab the staple without um, damaging the wire. Although they're very hard to find this, the three eighths and the squared. So the last couple of years, I've just had to buy the rounded ones. Anyway, so there's staples. The only one to use, we'll get to later, are these, these are called blackout caps. Kind of see that. They actually fit over, oops, actually fit over the bulb and black out the bulb. And we'll explain the purpose of that later. Um, so those are the things we need out of this box, the black and yellow box. Uh, this is my makeshift window here. You can kind of see that line drawn in the wood. Um, and again, you need a string of lights. <clears throat> um, typically, you do a window, you've got power coming from some other direction, usually somewhere near a gutter. Um, so what we like to do is plug the, get it all sorted out. You want the lights plugged in as you go. Reason for that is it's very common as you're stapling the lights that something gets, goes wrong with the lights and you want to kind of know it right away. Um, so you don't continue, you know, continue stapling the rest of it, plug it in, and now half of it doesn't work or it doesn't work at all. Um, and sometimes you can actually see what you did and fix it. Um, so yeah, we always keep it on. And then we always start with the female end first because we want all of our extra to be on the plug end. So we're running it, we're kind of using the rest of the lights that are left over as kind of an extension cord. Um, and uh, so in this, in this example here, this corner here is where I want the power to go up. So I'm gonna start here, basically I'm gonna go around the, go around the window, end up here, and then the power's gonna go that way. Um, so what I do, like, the first staple isn't too important, you're just trying to get it tacked down. Remember the guide here in the stapler, you wanna depress that till it gets, to get the wire in and then finish pulling the trigger. So I'm going to get that first one in, tack down. Now, I don't want the lights going every which way like this. I want them to all lay flat. Typically, I, I point them away from the window, and we use a 100 count string, so um, there's two sections of 50. Many lights come in sections of 50 that make up their circuit. So if something goes wrong, all 50 go out. Somewhere in the middle here, which I must have passed, there's another place where there's two wires, and you can always, you can actually cut here, right here. I could actually cut this here, and this half will continue working, and this half is dead. If I cut anywhere else in the line, um, it messes up the whole thing. So uh, it's the only place you can customize the length of the mini lights is right here. Oh, I'm holding that out of frame. There we go. Right here, there's two wires. The rest of the string is three. Um, so anyway, so I got I got stapled there. Um, now I'm going to pull that. I'm going to twist this around. You want to kind of use like it's kind of loose here so i could actually spin this back a little bit and get the tension to work for me spin this around i like to go at least i'm gonna put another one on that one make sure that's holding tight also when you staple you don't want the stapler up see i'm holding that up in the air what ends up happening is the staple comes down at an angle and tends to cut the wire you always want to make sure once you figure out where the wire is lay it flat hold it down tight and then pull the trigger if you hold it down loose, it bounces and it doesn't go in all the way. So that would give the most firm. Um, now that one's good and tight. So again, I like to go at least 
at least three before I put a staple in. In there, so I'm twisting the wires of cord to cooperate with me. On the corners, obviously, I, I can't go three because I gotta go around the corner. So I'm gonna put one here at the corner. Then I can kind of see I got a rounded corner here, so I'm kind of working with that. And I'm gonna wrap these. I, if you're lucky, sometimes you get four or five in here if you get the, the wire to cooperate with you. But you don't want to spend a lot of time fighting the wire. I've seen guys that just spend all the time trying to get it um, straight. Also seen guys where they put one on each side of the light, and that just isn't gonna help. The best thing is just, just get th at least three. Um, throw it down. So this one's pointing up a little bit. In that situation, I go ahead and roll it back. Now, there's actually tension holding that flat. And that gets us straighter. Like over here, I'm kind of, it's hard to see, but this one's pointing up a little bit. I can actually come back over here, kind of use my finger to roll the wire back a little bit like that, and then add one more. You don't have to do this. You don't have to get soup. I mean, you want them to lay flat to look good. Um, you can also get overly detailed and maybe there's a quarter inch under here. You're trying to get that down. It's not, as long as you're within a half inch of, you know, here to here, somewhere in there. Again, it's probably hard to see in the video, but um, you want to, you just don't want them, you know, like over here, you don't want them sticking straight up and then some over here. You, you want them all pointing in the general direction, same down, in the same direction. So, look around the corner here. A couple extra to the corner. Come up the side. Twist that one back like that. See, if I spin this one around, this one goes that way. So sometimes in that situation, I want a little more tension so I can actually spin this back that way, which will bring the whole line back. Now I got a little more play in it. You can also kind of play with these, and bend them back and forth to get them all to cooperate. So, there. Now I've got all the way around the window, but I still have all these lights here that I need to get rid of. So, but first I'm gonna run it I need to run this to wherever I'm hiding it. Typically, like I said, as a gutter. Um, sometimes it can be behind a bush, um, or maybe it's near something else that has lights, or maybe you're just jumping from one window to the next. Um, but at any rate, you don't want to leave a trail of lights. So again, that's where these little blackout guys come in. Blackout things. So you'll put on enough of these, um, like so. Cover out what you need. And then you can, you know, let's say we're running to the next next window. You want to make sure. Also, you want to make sure you get them all the way down, so you're covering all that light that's sticking out there. Get those down there. And then you also these things, if you can, kind of keep them straight too, because they will be noticed during the daytime. So you want to kind of make them look as nice as possible. You can see that on the video. Oh, you can. So you just throw that in there. Now all this is off screen. You're not going to see all these lights. Now, you've probably noticed too, you know, typically we put many lights in a tree and one or two bulbs out aren't noticed. This situation though, you know, we've got that one out up here, got another one over here. That's going to be noticed around a window. So what we usually do, so I'll take the string, like this is all of my leftover that's probably hiding somewhere. And I'm going to take these good bulbs and swap them with the bad bulbs. So the way I do that is I use the, the cutters. You're not trying to cut anything. Oh, I'm sorry. Use the cutters here. I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to just get them, see that right in between the bulb there and the socket. So I'm just using it as a, a way to grab it. Pop that bulb out until the whole light went dead. It's a good idea to remember where those bad lights were. I forgot to look. Let's put that in for a second. Get down here. So maybe a good idea to pull the bad one out first. Um, so pull that guy out. This was one I had out a minute ago. Put him in. Of course, for the circuit to work, you still got to put the bad one back in over here. 
And we're gonna put it up. So put this guy over here. So I'm just gonna come over here. It's probably good, well, it is good to do this before because the more I play with this line, the more it wants to bend other directions. So if you see this, it's good to fix it before you get it all stapled up there. And I wasn't paying attention. I'm hoping this one works. <laughs> in here this one over here all right so that all works and it's pretty much how you put the lights up <laughs>